Cristales donde el viento reina junto al juramento de la gente que vive acá. If the end of the world really existed, it would be called Last Hope, after the name of this area of Chile, in Patagonia. On the borders of Latin America and straddling Argentina and Chile is Patagonia, on the Chilean side is the province of Ultima Esperanza, and in the heart of the province, surrounded by estancias, is the Torres del Paín National Park. Five thousand sheep charge towards their summer grazing. Four gauchos from the Cerro Guido farm to lead them, and a dozen dogs to herd them. They're going to Sierra Baguales, the mountain of wild horses. In 1879, a tourist came to this very place. She was the first to have their name remembered by history, Lady Florence Dixie. When asked why on earth she was traveling so far from anywhere, she replied, because it is so far from anywhere. Patagonia was already the ultimate refuge, the place much longed for to forget the rest of the world. It's huge. Pascal is French and lives in London. It's the first day of his holiday in Patagonia. I arrived last night. Out for the first time this morning. It does you good. When you arrive from the city with the crowds, the buildings, where you're stuck in the pollution, and then you come here, well, it's a shock. The gauchos have led the flock across the 100,000 hectares of the Estancia. On the mountain of wild horses, it's Colavoro's turn to take charge of the animals. There are different ways of sending the dogs. It depends on the movement of the flock. If the sheep are going too fast, we send the dogs to block them. And if they're not moving on, we send the dogs in to encourage them. And we direct them with the horse. Now I'm going to send them over that way. Everyone here knows the songs of Chapa, who is a guide and gaucho. Every day, his music accompanies them. This saddle room is the base camp for the gauchos. It belongs to a hotel. It's right in the middle of the Torres del Paine National Park, at the junction of the most spectacular hiking routes in Patagonia. Here, tourism has mostly replaced ranching, and the gauchos now work for this hotel. It was built by the father of Liliana Kusanovic, a descendant of a Croatian immigrant who became a rancher. 
He worked as a rancher up until the 1990s, when more and more tourists started coming. The idea of developing tourism came up. But we are ranchers at heart, a family of ranchers. It's difficult not to keep the rancher's mindset. The gauchos change their employer, but not their nature. The last one who came is called Finia. I've always had a connection to the land. And as I've grown up, the connection has grown too. Here, my work consists of taking supplies to the different refuges in the area. Like half the gauchos here, Finia transports supplies to the refuges using pack horses, or pilcheros. I wrote this song for Micho. At the time, I was working at the refuge in Chileno. One day, there was a storm with torrential rain. And he came with how many pilcheros? Six. And he arrived at the refuge crying because it's very difficult to get up there with six pilcheros. How does it start? <laughs> Every day, come rain or shine, the pilcheros carry their cargo to the refuge at Chileno. The track goes into the Cordillera del Paine a steep mountain range uplifted by the magma millions of years ago, sculpted by glaciers and striated by streams and waterfalls. The refuge at Chileno is a compulsory stop for the many hikers who visit the mountains. From the refuge, the visitors all set out on the path that will lead them to the very heart of Patagonia. Two hours after leaving the refuge, the Torres. Three granite peaks the indisputable icon of the region. It's very important to me that the visitors know who we really are. The scenery is very beautiful, it's true, but it's the people who make you understand what the scenery is saying. And what is it saying? It speaks of an enormous force, of great natural catastrophes, distortions of the land. And at the same time, it speaks of an immense peacefulness, green areas, 
magnificent forests. Visitors should get to know the people from here, not just the landscape. In order for them to eat just one piece of meat, we will have spent months tending the flock. They should come and see how it works. They should come and see who we are. <laughs> In the park, which is completely oriented towards tourism, there are only a few who continue the way of life of the Patagonian horsemen. <laughs> I heard that a bridge came down, the one over the river. Is the one at Chileno still all right? Yeah, for the moment, but it might come down during the night. So tomorrow, Carlito will go and repair the bridge. Because they're experts, because they know the horses better than anyone, these gauchos are called Baquianos. These horses are fresh. They've just had several days rest on the mountain. Tomorrow, they'll set off again, either being ridden by hotel guests or loaded with supplies for the refuges. An interlacing of cordilleras, lakes and fjords, they came to visit the landscape as tourists and they never left again. One settled here as a cook, another as a guide, and they used their weekends to visit the land that changed their lives. Since morning, they've been traveling up Ultima Esperanza Fjord, led by Rodrigo. On every excursion, we try to get people to understand the real spirit of Patagonia. It's very hard to define the spirit of Patagonia. My personal definition relates to discovering places and feeling unique somewhere. I think that's the spirit. It's the discovery or the rediscovery of the world. And that's what we do here. At every step, we rediscover places. These sites are so little known, so little visited, that you get the feeling of drawing a new map for every place we visit. The little group cautiously approaches a giant, the Serrano Glacier. For Raquel, who is half Chilean and half Dutch, it's the last step on a personal journey. I came this place because it's really far away from everything and you really get to actively experience 
uh, the place you are in. It's not just looking at a picture, you're really uh, engaging in the environment and interacting with it. I really feel alive when I'm here. In Patagonia, men have put up a few fences and established some roads. But in a land where the rain comes down horizontally, nature still reigns supreme. An ancient Indian legend tells how Mother Earth took on the features of an animal, a guanaco, in order to exhort men not to take more from nature than necessary. It was an ecological message before its time, one that Marcus Tillman could have subscribed to. Marcos left the region of Hanover in Germany two weeks ago. Since then, he's been defying the winds of Tierra del Fuego and Patagonia as he slowly travels northwards. More than a tourist trip, it's an immersion. In Torres del Pine, the weather changes very quickly. The locals say you can pass through several seasons in one day. And it's true. I've already had snow, sunshine, torrential rain, hail, and so on. And that's every day. Sometimes it's very windy, and sometimes it's less windy. When it starts raining, you find some shelter or make yourself small, and you know that it will pass. How's it going? <laughs> Everything right? Yeah. Marcus say. Uh, You're going to Torres. Torres, yeah. You won't see. <laughs> you, I won't see them? No? Probably. No, tomorrow's no, no, no good forecast? Or? It's the same like, yeah, like so, today. So today. Have you seen them? Almost. <laughs> Almost? Yeah, What's that mean? Uh, like like the, the, the yeah, last yeah. part of it? Or? Okay. Yeah, Thank okay. you. See you and have fun in right. somewhere in right. Calafate. <laughs> Wild and steep, Patagonia is no picture postcard paradise. Mickey, Eduardo, Jorge and Pancho know that better than anyone. They are specialist glacier guides. Like all such giants, the Grey Glacier is constantly changing. They're forever drawing up the routes again and locating the difficulties for the next clients. The four guides are reconnoitering. The fact of being here enchants me. It's incredible for me. It's a magical place that I never tire of. The fact that everything is constantly changing, the colors, the sounds, and what I like very much is being able to introduce other people to it. The glacier is an ancestor, say the guides. An ancestor who tells a story that is as old as the world. A historian, in short, who slowly brings out his archives for all to see. Wow. Today, though, 
the ancestor is frail. Global warming is getting the better of its slowness. The glacier is melting. Yes, uh, this place is very vulnerable to human activity. Generally, uh, the people who come here wait to see a chunk of ice fall off. It's true that it's entertaining. A huge chunk makes a big splash. But in another sense, it's not so cheerful, because it means the glacier is flowing away. In a way, it's, it's taking away its secrets as it's melting, and everything turns to water. That fragility is the paradox of a piece of land where nothing is on a human scale. In Patagonia, the visitor experiences his own humility. Here in Patagonia, Mother Earth is so rugged and raw that she, she wins her own respect. One day you can be looking at the Torres on a fine, peaceful day, and suddenly, down comes the rain or terrible hail. And whoever you are, where, wherever you're from, whatever your origin or culture, it strikes you. You can't get away from it. That's the kind of respect you owe to this small piece of land. I could compare it to a sort of creature that, that says to you, look how beautiful I am. And at the same time, keep away, watch out. Ver cómo se alejan mis pensamientos My songs and my music talk about life, of cold, of love, of the wind, of the sea, of nature in general, and how a person develops his desires in that setting. People from here have developed and adapted themselves to living here. They've understood what it is to live with this nature, with the forces of nature. That's enough for me to be happy. I have no need to go anywhere else to find what I already have. This is where I'm from. The people here can tame only their horses. The land itself remains wild. Thank mm -hmm. you.